Well, I'm very pleased to have with me Sam Garraway. He's the chief executive of a group called Christians Against Poverty, uh, or some of you will just know it as CAP or CAPS. Um, they do amazing work in the community. Uh, and well, my opinion is because we've been very supportive of them, great work, but often do it very quietly. So I wanted to get Sam on the podcast to talk about what CAPS does. So Sam, welcome to the show. Great to be with you, Simon. Thank you for having us. Oh, look, a pleasure. So for a lot of people listening in, they, they won't be necessarily familiar with what Christians Against Poverty or CAPS does. So let's start with the, the simple, big and easy question. Who are you and what do you do? Yeah, great. Well, if you haven't heard about Christians Against Poverty before, we're a team that's motivated by the love that Jesus has for people in need and partner with local churches to release New Zealanders from poverty, building financial resilience, ending money chaos in people's lives and build good relationships with money, self, others and God. So that is what's driving us. And we do that by running two services. One is called Cap Money and the other is called Debt Help. And so both are aiming to bring practical help and spiritual hope to people. Both are free services and uh, both are working with people regardless of who you are, where you are, in order to equip you with what you need to move out of your situation and towards, I guess, that goal of financial resilience and capability. So how do people find you? Are they often, if you will, directed through church connections or people who just know of your good work and say, hey, look, we recommend to someone financially struggling to come along and see you? Bit of both. So the number one way that uh, people would find out about CAP is the partners that are on the ground, so churches that are on the ground who are running the work, are promoting it in various channels. People would call up um, or people who have been helped are telling someone about it. So word of mouth is the number one referral for the debt help service. Uh, but it's been promoted through all different channels in the community and community agencies. And it's amazing, I guess, collaboration of civil uh, and community action to be bringing about this work. So I'm probably most familiar with your debt help sort of vector or ac activity. Talk us through what that looks like. So obviously we'll know lots of New Zealanders who are, well, struggling with massive amounts of, of, of debt. I assume that's what it is. So these people come to you. What, if, well, put it this way. Is there a threshold? How, how much in debt do you need to be? And then what do you and your team do to help them out? Yeah, no threshold. Uh, services open to everyone, free to anyone. And so how it works is that there's about 50 locations around the country where the service is running, free phone number. Uh, if you find yourself in that situation of struggling with unmanageable debt, time and time again, clients are talking to us about sleepless nights, uh, anxiety, uh, not being able to be putting food on the table for their kids, feeling like a failure as a parent. Those are the types of stories that are coming through. People who feel like they've tried uh, different avenues before to address their situation and are really just at the end of themselves. I think of a client I was speaking to not long ago, uh, talking about feeling like in a deep, dark hole and how uh, it really is the framework, the scaffolding, he described it as a ladder coming down to the hole to climb his way out. So how it works is we visit someone in their home, uh, through our local partners and they are gathering information and they're gathering an understanding of someone's debt uh, and they're sending that to the support office uh, who is a team of experts who will sit about building a budget, negotiating with creditors and exploring various solutions for that person's situation and presenting that back to that individual. And so uh, Christians Against Poverty isn't repaying debt for people. We are providing expertise, direction uh, and advocacy, getting in alongside people, negotiating with creditors, building a budget that prioritises the food, necessities and uh, sets them on a journey of repaying their debt. So the average journey takes about, uh, we've actually just seen it tip over three years. So about three years of repaying uh, your debt to get to that place of what we celebrate as the milestone of debt free. And to date, um, uh, it's nearly two and a half thousand households. So it's over 2,400 households that we're celebrating have reaching the debt free milestone so far. That's amazing in and of it of itself. And I said sort of in the introduction how you do it quite quietly. I would maybe add the word quite humbly, but it's also important for people to know what you're 
you're doing. So important probably to draw out, you're not paying off their debts, so you're not a charity collecting a whole lot of money to pay off debts. Strikes me, and I think I picked up, and also knowing your work, one is you go and do a lot of negotiation with creditors, uh, and obviously then trying to support the family to have better habits. Can you talk us through both of those a, a little? I mean, uh, I mean, it's probably how long's a piece of string, but are creditors normally responsive to you? And then on behalf of you to your, your clients, say, okay, we'll, we'll work with you to, to solve this, because they want their money back, surely. So that'll be a big factor. Yeah. We do get asked that a lot. They're going, so you're going in there to bat for these people and negotiate with creditors. What's that relationship like? And uh, it's a really strong relationship. We, the, the, the people that we're working, they have stopped answering the phone. They are hiding in their homes, avoiding that call from uh, a creditor or a debtor. And so from a creditor's perspective, they now can pick up the phone. There's someone professional on the other end that they can liaise with and get a great update um, on a situation with. The major banks will stop interest and charges for six months just off the strength of the letterhead now in terms of being able to create some breathing space for someone that we're working with. And so we're not repaying people's debts for them, as you say, Simon. We are providing the support. We're putting in place some structures and some terms that bring some balance back to their situation and sets them on that path. So uh, I think it's a uh, over $110 million of debt and bills has been repaid so far. So if we think about um, how how a creditor might feel, uh, we are playing an active role. Yes, negotiating terms uh, and negotiating fair, returns, fair terms, but we are actually seeing debt repaid and recovered. And that obviously is good news for a creditor as well. And so you've got this amazing uh, way that the model works where we've got the church in action, we've got individuals empowered to be uh, building uh, and, and empowered on their journey. And then we've got creditors as well who are able to play a part in that um, uh, actively in that journey. So it's a pretty cool combination of all of those factors uh, for sure. Oh, look, I love the model. It makes it makes a lot of sense to me. I, I'd, I'd phrase it as sort of a win-win. Obviously your, your client uh, or that family gets to pay off their debts and then they can answer the phone again. Um, but on the flip side, yeah, the creditors get their, their money. So it's pleasing to hear that I assume most, not all, most will be quite cooperative. But I perhaps would want to draw out as well, you guys have such a great reputation now. I just love what you said on the strength of your very letterhead, uh, the banks. Well, did you say six months? Um, yeah, I think it's been will be six months. I mean, there are still uh, irresponsible lenders uh, out there, um, or sharks as people might think of them, and we've been doing an increasing amount of work around uh, seeking recourse for people who've been preyed upon or been subject to irresponsible lending, and that has, um, uh, just since a, a piece of work we've been doing around that in play over the last couple of years, that's seen a million dollars in recourse for clients who've been taken advantage of and uh, put in unfair, unjust positions that they shouldn't have been put in in the first place. And so in that, we're w walking alongside those people, not just seeking the advocacy and the recourse for them, but also um, uh, ensuring that they've got the capabilities and capacity to continue on that journey um, towards what we celebrate as financial resilience. Again, I think it's brilliant. I mean, um, I, I think of myself as relatively intelligent, uh, but at the same time, when I've been trying to, uh, well, I've done my own negotiations over time, it's really, really complex. And so it's easy to see how some people can get into trouble, particularly with sharks. And actually, it's a slight tangential question. Are we still seeing these Oh, what did they used to the vans that used to drive around selling products in neighborhoods at exceptionally huge prices? I forgot what they used to call them. Are they still around? If we can think of what they're called, yeah, not so much. Um, so that was taken care of a couple of years ago, both by a uh, alternative solution. I think the problem areas that we would highlight is um, uh, the the mix of the payday lenders, the um, buy now pay later products, and yeah, what we'd call high interest consumer credit. Um, so those are still three areas of uh, where that's not working as well as it could and preying on people. So uh, buy now, pay later products, we're continuing to see the amount 
of people presenting with buy now pay later the number of buy now pay laters that they've got and the value of those buy now pay later products have all tripled year on year for the last three years so in terms of uh the direction that of travel that that's heading in uh it's definitely an area of concern for us and so we're working to try and create not just solutions but changes um around that and then obviously consumer credit there's been some good steps towards you know interest rate caps and things like that coming into play recently but those interest rate caps are still at 50 percent and i don't know simon if you've ever been subject to a loan that was a 50 percent per annum interest rate but it uh it can spiral pretty quickly and it gets people uh into a precarious situation pretty quickly oh there's some real well to be on the record no i haven't fortunately um if i had been <laughs> i suspect i'd be at your door uh but i i have been struck as i've helped people both in my former career but even a couple of weeks ago a conversation with uh, someone who just was celebrating a, a purchase which was great but they had no conception of the the terms of the agreement one of these classic 18 months interest free etc cetera, etc cetera. And, and reading some of the terms with them it was like well you realize if you default on even one payment it all comes back on um you, you, it's it's a real trap you've got to be almost if not you have to be perfect the entire course of the repayment or else they, they're going to hit you hard um, plus the person didn't have the money in the first place, which I suppose leads to that second element that you guys are doing. It's that, that mentoring, budgeting, support of the clients mm -hmm. themselves. Yeah, talk us through that. Well, that that is a key part of any type of, I guess, intervention or uh, community practice that should be happening is, I guess, the holistic approach or the wraparound support. And so the elements of that in the debt help service uh, is because we are, supporting people on the journey we're actually putting that in place across time so the local relationship that the representative from the church holds we call that the debt coach they are walking with them in, in various spheres of life inviting them to take part in events uh, and then the team here at the support office will is building relationship over time and really helping shape how decisions are made around money uh, which is a, a, fantastic in that and then in the cap money service that really is teaching people how to build a budget balance a budget and live within their means so nearly 20,000 households have been through that around the country and a really vital part when we zoom out and look at what things are taking place in the nation as we need good education we need good responsive things and we also need uh, to equip people with the ability to make a good decision um, when, they've, uh, when they're faced in that moment. Because life happens to all of us. We don't sit here and think that um, we're above some type of situation happening to us that requires, that puts pressure on us financially. And so we need um, the competencies and we need the skills that we can draw on uh, when those things are happening to us in life. So are you finding, it's a very general question, I'm afraid, but financial literacy. So for the people you're dealing with throughout the community, are you seeing financial literacy, financial understanding getting better, getting worse or stable? I don't mean by your programs, obviously doing your program increases financial literacy, but yeah, the years that you've been operating, are Kiwis becoming more literate around money matters or are we getting collectively worse? I wouldn't make too much of a general answer around that, um, Simon. I think from our point of view, um, financial literacy and education is a part of the answer. But when we look at the size of the problem, it's not enough to solve it on its own. So where I'd steer us in understanding the problem, uh, the major banks will release different statistics around the levels of savings that we've got as a nation. And they very slightly, but they float around um, reflecting that 40% of our nation has got less than $1,000 in savings and 70% of our nation has got less than $5,000 in savings. So when we think about that as a statement on the financial resilience that we have as a nation, it means that 70% of our nation is reaching for a lending product at uh, should life be throwing them a curveball that costs more than $5,000? So 
when we think of how exposed we are as a nation, 40% of us has less than $1,000 in savings. And, and again, this is coming from the major banks and what they're seeing. I don't know about you, but for me, who's passionate about this country, we're really exposed around that. And financial literacy on its own is not enough to start turning the dialer on that. We need to be shifting habits, behaviors. We need solutions in place for people that uh, are there for them to draw on when that chaos is unfolding that isn't high interest consumer debt so i think we need more than financial literacy but certainly we're not seeing that figure that the banks release decrease it's uh, continuing to stay high as a percentage we get to see it updated this year uh, following the i guess rising cost of living that we're all experiencing some way shape or form and we're seeing that directly in our work have an impact in uh, the expenses people are navigating in the the debt repayment terms, I sort of hinted at it before, we've seen that shift from a two to three year uh, repayment term to nudging over 3% now. Uh, and so the pressure that that brings and the, should I say, the cocktail that we've got as a nation of the problem, like it's pretty big and we're quite exposed as a nation. I definitely agree from my own work and experience. And as you say too, there's no single uh solution like it's easy and I, I can say as a former politician it was always a big thing oh well let's just uh um do some financial literacy programs tickets all sorted no that's a part of the solution but it's not the solution um and but i also pick up you know when listeners think about it five thousand dollars buffer on average that ain't much when you know we think about issues that happen in our lives the car breaks down or blows up or whatever like Five grand doesn't go a long way. So as you keep saying, we're really, really exposed. So with CAPS then, what, what is your, what's your point of difference then? Because there's lots of groups that work into this space in different ways. But what would you define as your point of difference? Yeah, so two things at Christians Against Poverty that I'd say is point of difference. So the uh, only provider of debt help in this form in the country. And so it is a form of partial money management to some degree where we are creating not just the support but i guess the accountability for people around that so it's not build a budget and here you go it's build a budget and now we're going to go on a journey around that and so that level of um accountability is a an, an engagement is a key differing factor from a a budget advisor and then it is the centralized expertise so a team here that's dedicated to exploring negotiating with creditors uh, advocacy uh, at times we explore insolvency options and hardship options for individuals and and access to that expertise that isn't um, easily reflected in some of the more local uh, operators who are trying to support people around their funding. So it really is, I often talk about it to the team as local relationships and centralized expertise. And that is one of the best, best things that we've got to offer. So you've got, as I said, uh, 50 locations around the country that this service is running out of debt help that we're talking about. And they are offering all of that local relationship, but they're backed by that centralized expertise. And that is such an advantage uh, to those that are on the front line, knowing they don't have to be an expert in every aspect uh, of the service and know all the tools to draw on, but there's a team that are working with them to provide that. So we've talked, well, I'd argue quite high level and quite broadly, which I've actually found quite fascinating in itself, but. Are you able to share with viewers and listeners a success story, not breaking anyone's confidences, but is there a story that you could share that illustrates um, how your work has impacted on the ground? Yeah, awesome. So if you want to see uh, several of these, we've got some great video testimonies at capnz.org. One that has really resonated with me is of a couple called Mark and Carol. Um, they uh, come from Timaru and uh, their marriage was on the rocks. They had financial pressure that was coming in. Mark had lost his job and uh, had they hadn't been communicating. The debt had built up. And uh, it really was, I guess, breaking point where they were started living separately. And there was that ultimatum moment, uh, ultimatum moment, sorry, where are we going to reach out for help? And 
Um, they picked up the phone and from that very first phone call, hope started to enter their situation. And I love in the work that we do that hope doesn't start the moment that someone goes debt free. It starts the moment that you realize that there's someone in your corner, there's someone saying that we know what to do here, there's a way forward, there's a way out of this. And Mark and Carol's journey is going from feeling like their uh, uh, marriage going south, uh, Mark wanting to uh, take his own life as a way of considering where they're going to uh, journey across a few years of going debt free, making the hard decision, choosing that constantly across that journey. Mark actually ended up starting his own business um, in water blasting and washing houses. And they're just an inspiration to talk to now. They, they will talk of the weight lifting off them going from feeling as a failure as a father to be able to partake in activities for their kids and provide and that for us for me for the team you probably hear it or see it coming through that's what gets us out of bed in the morning that's what this work is all about is seeing people step towards that freedom you know mark talks about there being no greater feeling on earth than saying yes to your kids whereas in previously he was just wrestling with that shame and failure as a dad of wanting to be able to provide. So for me as a young dad, that's certainly a story that's close to my heart, Simon. Uh, and we're delight that that is the story of nearly two and a half thousand households around the country who have been on that type of journey um, just through debt help. And um, in many ways, yeah, nearly 20,000 households through the Cat Money Service um, who's working with people in similar ways there. So yeah. It's a real privilege to be able to journey with people in that way. Well, again, I, I just think it's fantastic. I've also learned now that you meant to say yes to your, your kids or stepkids. I've taken a note of that. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, obviously, lives change. I suppose that's one of the fundamental elements and, you know, part of bringing on to Family Matters is actually once people can get their finances, if you will, in, in order or, or stabilised, this is good for families. It actually stabilizes or restores relationships, enables better outcomes for children and families. So, you know, we asked what's motivating you. Well, you I think you've touched on it earlier of what your point of difference rather, but what what is it that, that motivates you? I think the faith element you touched on at the start, but I thought I might just return to it. Yeah, from your view, what what is it that motivates Christians Against Poverty to be helping people in this way? Yeah, as I said at the start, our, our faith grounds us in our motivation, so the love that Jesus has for people in need. Uh, and then our vision is really the other aspect that we're drawn to, so ending money chaos. And so everything we do, yes, we want to strengthen someone's financial position, uh, but we actually want to see relationships strengthened. So you might even see it behind me there, part of our impact model, strengthening the relationships with money. So uh, we talk about that before and this feeling of like, do I feel competent with my money? Uh, does money give me anxiety in a sleepless night? Uh, the relationship with oneself, I shared about Mark, feeling like a failure. Actually, now that my finances are in a stronger position, I actually view myself differently. I think about myself differently. The relationship with others, I'm not feeling uh, ashamed to attend a social gathering because I can't take something to contribute or uh, my marriage or uh, whatever my, my relationship with my kids, that relationship with others, and then also the relationship with God. And so those really are the things, that, the impact that we're wanting to see and come about, stronger financial position and then stronger relationships across money, self, others, and God. And so, um, yeah, that's part of our vision, uh, chaos, uh, ending money chaos, and uh, I guess the things that we would view as steps towards that chaos coming to an end. So last question from me, if that's all right, because it's, well, I think of the current situation when it comes to budgeting, mentoring work, the support from central government, as I understand, it's been cut back. There isn't as much support. Um, how is it that you guys are continuing to, to thrive? Uh, and I'm not trying to make a particularly political point here, but there isn't endless money for budgeting and mentoring services. Never has been. But, you know, you guys continue to push forward and again my word to, to thrive i'm sure as the chief executive there's times where you're scratching your head but how is it that you are continuing to do the work that you're doing so successfully i think one of the beautiful things about the work of cap is that it is funded by people who believe in this work they believe in the vision they believe in the motivation and so 
there is more than 4,000 uh, individuals who give a monthly donation to the work of CAP to make this possible. So we don't have a contract for service with the government. Um, uh, we are funded by people who identify, who go, yeah, we want to see an end to money chaos in this country too, who see the type of impact I was talking through before and yeah, really, I guess, identify with that and want to play their part in supporting this work and seeing this type of help and hope for people across the country. So for that, we're really um, incredibly grateful and thankful for uh, in terms of the supporter base um, because it's no small feat to do all of this and just truly wouldn't be possible without all of those different individuals playing their part uh, to make this uh, to make this come about. So um, yeah, it's a pretty remarkable model in that point of view and something that we're yeah grateful for. It was a bit of a naughty setup for me because I'm conscious that, yeah, you have a massive supporter base of amazing people uh, and so not dependent on, as you say, other agencies. So on that uh, segue, which I, I, well, was in my head, hadn't shared with you, how do people learn more about what you do? How do they become supporters and funders? Where should they go? Yeah, capnz.org, and you can check out the Get Involved page there if you've, if anything that I've shared has resonated, if you're sitting there going, yep, when I think about finances, that gives me some type of uh, anxiety or that gives me some type of sleepless night, you might want to check out either the debt help service or the cap money service. Or if you if this work has resonated with you and you want to play a part in bringing help and hope to people in your community across the nation, uh, right now we need your support. Uh, service availability has grown by 15% in the last 12 months. So uh, it's amazing to be growing because the need is great right now and we're anticipating more growth of service across the remainder of this year. So if you are able to support and willing to support would be great if you just check that out, capnz.org and the Get Involved or make a donation tab. That would be fantastic. Well, well said and thank you, Sam, for sharing so much about the work you do. It's it's invaluable. Rach and I have, have always been in awe at, the again, what you guys have led and i'm sure there are well they said there's literally thousands and thousands of new zealanders now and their families who have uh, benefited so look thanks for coming on to the show thank you for all you do and if i might uh, through you to say thanks to your amazing team oh, been a pleasure simon thanks for having me